you know this can be part two of the DVD and Blu-ray update um, this Blu-ray is uh, this big blah, blah, blah. this update is fairly big um, big as the last one what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go through these a bit quicker and next time I want to do updates I'm going to maybe shorten the load of them because there's too much and I can't really talk about the films um, adequately enough and it's kind of a rush job but um, next time it'll be a, a more um, coordinated um, update so I apologise um, about that um, I'm just going to go through some uh, Hong Kong Shaw Brothers titles fairly quickly uh, we've got 10 Tigers of uh, Kwantung picked this up for a good price, been out of print for a while pretty standard, nothing too amazing but there's fantastic piece of gore in the end um, Venom's in this one uh, plus T Long and uh, a few others um, yeah it's, it's about a good solid 7 out of 10 nothing too spectacular but the ending is, is it really makes the film um, now we've got T Long David Chang in Anonymous Heroes this is a really good one great just fantastic ending just all out just bodies everywhere just um you know, heroic sacrifice to the max. It's a, uh, it's a really, really good one. Really enjoyed this. Real good show, but there's one. Um, now this one's been out of print for a while. I managed. This is a legendary collection. Uh, this is a triads. Uh, the inside story. Chayon Fat. Chayon Fat's father. Horan can remember the triads. He gets killed. Comes back and his group try to. Um, bring him in try to make him you know lead the family and uh, he doesn't want any part of it uh who we got in this we've got roy chung plays a piece of shit like well no he's not too much of a piece of shit in this he normally plays a piece of shit um we have chan wei man always plays a real legitimate badass and uh, um xing fui on always play um see him a lot playing always a heavy good film great ending um yeah enjoy the film a lot um, now this has been out of print for a while as well this is a rich and famous uh, with Chai and Fat Andy Lau um, the first film is standard kind of film it set you up for the second one the second one's a lot more crazy the ending is just just unbelievable unbelievable ending Fant easily top 10 most enjoyable um, shootouts in a Hong Kong film it's amazing definitely check it out this, the, for the second one first one's great the second one's really good um, now we've got a Jimmy Wang Yu film there's a few Jimmy Wang Yu stuff in this uh, update um, Master of the Fine Guillotine um, this is like the full uncut print um, bit ropey in places obviously because you know some of the stuff about the draw from it's not bad um, I think it's a bit overhyped I've seen a hell of a lot better and, and, and at least it's a lot better Jimmy Wang Yu films. Um, I guess I'm not a real fan of the object, the flying guillotine. Um, I think some of the deaths, there's only so many deaths you can actually do with it. Um, it's okay, but um, it's it's not as amazing as I've heard. Now, I picked up from Shout, um, they did a good job with some of the prints as well, uh, the Jimmy Wang Yu collection. Um, now, Beach of the War Guards I had, I, I'll have to have a look on the print to see if it's better. Man Called Tiger, really, really good entertaining um, film. Tattoo Dragon, I haven't watched it. One on Boxer, one of the best martial arts films um, I think I've ever seen. For its sheer entertainment, it, I don't think there's many that can beat it. It's absolutely just balls to the wall, brilliance, gore, hilarity, just absolutely fantastic. It's it's such a great film. I ha it needs to be seen by any fan of any fan of Shaw Brothers and martial arts films in general um, you know but this is independent Wang Yu after he left Shaw and uh, a lot more hard hitting one on boxer especially it's just, just it's brilliant absolutely just brilliant film um, right for, uh, got a few blu-rays here um, this is a, a few dollars more um, Eastwood and Ivan Cleef it's uh, this is the German edition goes on around for about a minute longer don't need so much about that film you know uh, just a brilliant film, classic. Um, got a uh, good and bad, the ugly. Um, visual quality on this is uh, just a uh, load better. Need to I need to watch um, the films back to back again. I mean, again, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West is my favourite Leone film by Country Mall. Um, 
but yeah, it's just something about that film in particular. Uh, Dirty Dozen, just classic. I don't know anyone who doesn't like Dirty Dozen. Um, I'd be surprised anyway, but you know, he's to his own. Uh, I got this from Japan. Uh, Redford didn't tell them where uh, Willie Boy's here. Uh, here, good things, good western. Uh, another film that's not so good. It, it, it's a rush job, uh, undefeated. John Wayne, Rock Hudson, uh, former Confederate and uh, Union soldiers uh, unite. Uh, they go to Mexico, Maximilian's troops uh, still entrenched there, so you got the war going on there. It's a bit of a rush job. The ending, I think John Wine, yeah, John Wine falls off his horse. It says in a film fact, he severely injured himself, and I think that definitely affected the ending. The ending is just, it's just dog shit. I'm really surprised they did the ending they did. I was expecting a bit more action. It was uh, kind of terrible. And Gunfight the OK Corral, Lancaster and Kirk Douglas. Not the most accurate portrayal of uh, the clan, uh, the Clanton uh, feud, but it's still very entertaining. And uh, both of them are great. It's 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 yeah, it's a good one. Um, Lon Chaney, uh, in front of the opera uh, from BFI. Just a great, great, great film. Love with extras. BFI done an absolutely fantastic job on this. You haven't seen this? Definitely watch it. Um, Great, great atmosphere, just fantastic. Chan does an absolutely brilliant job. Um, right, I will show. I picked this up for I think I picked this up for about a tenner. Stallone box set, um, Cobra, which I haven't seen in in ages. Need to give that a rewatch. Assassins is just dog shit, not worth the time of day. Tango and Cash, absolutely love it, especially this I haven't seen in years. Demolition Man, I like that. So, yeah, that's stuff. <laughs> not much more to say about that. Um, right. I'll show some of these now because I've got to talk about this film because it was just entertaining for about half hour and then it kind of went to entertaining in a sort of perverted way. This is Welcome to New York, um, Jar Depardieu, um, uh, Apple Ferreira directs, um, very, I think, loosely, ba uh, loosely based on that uh, finance guy. I can't think of his name at the moment. I'm not sure if he was called Devereux. I know he wasn't, but... Um, Jared Apogee plays Mr. Devereux, he handles uh, some sort of finance and he's just a colossal pervert and around about the first 40 minutes of this film it's just just softcore porn with Depardieu with numerous women in various perverted acts, I mean I was in just pieces laughing, I swear just just him grunting and making just, just the state of him alone had me in pieces, I love Gerard, I really do um it hits a crescendo around about halfway through when it decides to be more serious after this 40, 45 minutes of just incessant nudity, gratuitous sex and various perversity and um, it suffers for it to the seriousness. You're not really interested and you don't really care. The scene when he's being ship searched in prison, oh, I swear man, the state of Gerard had me an absolute just, oh, I was just in pieces laughing. I mean, he's just... He's an absolute state, but it's a very for the first forty minutes. He's very fearless. He has absolutely no fear whatsoever. Just many actors would balk about doing um, a film like this, but for the first forty minutes, definitely. And seeing Gerard naked for some hilarious reason, you know, it, it kind of appealed to me. Um, uh, I got Break Him Around. It's just a classic film. Edward Woodward, Jack Thompson, Brian Brown. Uh, Moran is accused of um, murdering a group of Boers during the Boer War. Um, he's, he's court martial. It's just a, uh, it's just a brilliant film. Questions many aspects of war. Um, it, the ending of this is just. If you're not feeling a bit emotional, I, I'd be surprised. It's it's a great film. I, I'd expect Criterion to release that at some point. Got this as well out of print Blu-ray for an absolute steal, steal of a price. Um, Red Scorpion, real good one. The only problem I have with it is Brian James kind of just disappears from the film halfway through and I, I quite like you know Brian James deserves to die in every film I love him to pieces but he's a piece of shit bad guy and he needs to die in films and they, for some reason he just kind of fell out of the film which was a shame I wanted to see him get you know brutally killed by Dolph but it didn't happen um, Scum just uh, nothing more to say I mean it says one of the most brutal it, one of the most brutal institutional films. I mean, prison films as well. I mean, it's just that rape scene. My God, it's just, just, just beyond the pale. It's just beyond belief. Um, 
various performances fantastic it's just something about it it's just so it's really good has this got the documentary on um see there's a really good oh no this has a Boston documentary on this there's a BBC documentary it's really good when they talk about no no it, it's not that it's, it's on the DVD which is unfortunate it's a really good documentary where they really speak about the riot scene how it it, it really got out of hand I remember Alan Ford talking about it where there's people who were just desperate to fight him because they were bringing in guys from outside various of the um, various of the um, acting groups and I think some real kids let's put it that way it's a great film. It, it it loses nothing of its power today. It's, it's just it's brilliant. Um, ninth configuration, Stacy Keach, uh, directed by um, William Peter Blatty. <clears throat> really, uh, really brilliant stuff. It's a great film. The bar brought in this as well. It's just amazing. But it's just uh, it's it's a brilliant film. It's, it's quite a complicated film. It's um, but definitely recommend it. Um, film I probably wouldn't really recommend. It wasn't bad. Um, it's Kino as well. Bloody Mama with Shelley Winter. She does a good job. Um, her brood as well in it. it Don Stroud. Um, particular kind of standout. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I expected a more kind of balls to the wall ending, but I suppose it's quite early. Um, De Niro as well was in this young De Niro. Hints on kind of various incest as well. Some of the murders are quite brutal, and it? it's not bad. It kind of just runs out of steam near the end. Um, we've got Drum. Um, I love this film. Warren Oates' performance in this is one of just the best, <laughs> best performances in a bad way. Um, some of his lines in this just I can't even describe them how funny they are you shouldn't be laughing at a film like this but you just can't help it Yafet Kota is great John Kelly cosplay is just a perverted fuck um, Norton's uh, Norton's pretty solid in it but Warren Oates makes this film his performance in it is great it's um really really good one Kino again I mean I've got so many Kino ones in this update um, I think I've got a, another couple coming now what am I going to show for what? now this is White Line and Burt Reynolds uh, just a sort of a good old boy type um, adventure um, with Ned Beatty, Bo Hopkins, Matt Clark, R.J. Armstrong. It's got a real sort of good southern kind of cast. Um, good film, solid, good, uh, 8 out of 10, definitely. But I definitely, for me anyway, Gator <clears throat> sequel, I preferred this. This was, a, this was much better, um, mainly for... Burt Reynolds, mate. What's his name? No. Jack Weston. His performances. Bama McCall in this is just amazing. The scene when he goes into a bar and tears shit up in this is just brilliant. It's it's a really good film. Really enjoy this. So if White Lightning was probably about seven and a half, eight out of ten, this was at least nine. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed them both. But Gator definitely was a stand more of the standout film. Um, across 110th Street. Quinn Coto, just brilliant. It often kind of falls into the kind of black exploitation films, but it shouldn't really because it's 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 a uh, it's a brilliant film in its own right. That's not to say black exploitation films can't be good, but there's no black exploitation film as good as this. And I think it, that's just that's just my opinion. But um, there, there, there's a real professionalism in this. This is just a it's just a brilliant film. A little bit time before as well, some of the, the mask kind of exploitation films anyway. But he gets kind of lumped into that bracket. Uh, Mr. Majestic, one of my favourite Bronson films. Again, Kino release, got out near. He died too young, man. Died too young. He plays such a piece of shit in this. He was so good, man. Legitimate tough guy as well. Um, died way before his time. He died when he was like 45, 46. Died of a heart attack, didn't he? Everyone know him as uh, Virgil Salazzo and uh, Godfather, but oh, he was good in this. You could really believe him and Branson had definitely have a real set too. You know, it's a uh, great cover art as well. Right, again from Kino, Avenging Force, Michael Dudikoff, one of my favourite action films of the eight is. Um, it's uh, it's just an all-out classic. Steve James as well died way too young. Love Steve James. When his family get annihilated in this, it's just an all-out, just memorable action film moment. Anyone who knows their action films remember that, <laughs> remember that moment um, with a kid going off the roof. Just brilliant dummy action, brilliant film, brilliant film. Absolutely love that film. Um, right, some steel books, um, Shivers. I haven't got many Cronenberg films left now to get. Uh, 
this is uh, com the camera art's not too bad. Um, I'm not, you know, it's not amazing, but you know, it's, it's um, not my favourite of all time, but it's uh, still pretty good. Uh, Toxic Avenger, I picked this up dirt cheap with a few other um, releases. I love Toxic Avenger. I, lo I, 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 I like all the Toxic films. I'm not a massive fan of trauma in general. Sometimes they, sometimes their films are pretty shit, in my opinion. But um, yeah, they're, they're not particularly for me. A lot of them. Um, I picked this up for Dirt uh, Doll Man with what's his name? Yeah, Tim Thomason. Um, Near Dark, and he's been in a few others. I think he was in Vietnam. Tim Thomason. Yeah, there's some guy who's only about 12 inches tall, sent to Earth. I think it's got a young... Oh, what's his name? Oh, uh, the guy from uh, Watchmen. Uh, Jackie O'Hare. Yeah, he's in it. Got that for dirt price. Dirt cheap. Picked this up dirt cheap as well. Pit in the Pendulum. Uh, Stuart Gordon did this one. Lance uh, Hendrickson plays the leader of the Inquisition. Um, yeah, I'll have returns up in it as well. My God. Oh, I didn't know I'd turn up in this. Haven't seen this in a long, long time. I'll have to check that out. Um, I picked this up from Code Red, Messiah of Evil. I've had this recommended to me as well. Um, but I picked it up as well. I think it's I think it's out of print now, I think. I hear good things. I hope it's good anyway. I hear good things anyway. Some of the Code Red stuff again is a bit hit and miss, but um, I think that should be good. Um, got a few um, Screen Factories, Tales from the Crypt, Bolt of Horror. Bolt of Horror's got the uncut. Uh, parts in this that wasn't available in the MGM DVD. Um, Vault of Horror's not so great. Certain stories are better than others. Now, Tales from the Crypt is an all-out classic. I just the Peter Cushion story in this is just more of my all-time just favourites. I fucking hate what they do to him in that. I really, it's brilliant and it's so close to the bone as well. Considering his wife died uh, um, round about this time, he's brilliant in it. All, all the stories are good in, in the Tales from the Crypt. Oh, I could watch that again and again, absolutely love it. Um, Monkey Shines. Just, oh, I love this film. It's got an alternative ending, this is, I've never seen an alternative ending. Yeah, loaded with extras as well. Deleted scenes as well, was it deleted scenes on... The DVD I had, I'm not too sure. But I haven't seen the alternative ending. Alternative cover art as well, the monkey's kind of semi-normal. On, on the other one, I wanted the crazy kind of with the with the razor, uh, dark half. Um, I never read the, uh, the book, or oh, did I read some of the King book? I'm not too sure. I hear Timothy Hutton was a monster asshole on this film. I know they talk about it in the commentary. I hear him and one of the actresses was a, a really shitty to um, Michael Rucker. I hear he's really hard to work with Timothy Hutton. It's quite weird, man. I wouldn't think he... I, I know um, Romero comments on it, but it's a good film, man. I, I, I like the dark half. Um, Candyman 2, Fell Out to the Flesh, like this as well. I really like the flashback as well, <clears throat> when you see what happens to Candyman. Really brutal man with the lynch mob. Uh, it's good, man. The third one's a piece of shit. The, the candy, I hate the third film. But, but you know, both films are good. I read the short story as well by um, Clark Barker. It's nothing like that. It's, it's, the films are better, but it's, again, it's only a short story. That, um, Pumpkinhead. Love the cover art of this. Brilliant film. Love it. Just, just uh, the other films don't exist to me. The other Pumpkinhead films. This film is just brilliant. Um, you really forget, man. You forget Stan Winston directed this film. Great film. I love Lance Hendrickson as well. Um, I picked up some Korean tiles. <coughs> This is a lovely release as well for um, Fight or Move. I haven't had a chance to watch this film yet. I'll be watching that very soon. Um, I had this film um, anyway, uh, but I wanted to pick up. I couldn't find the one with the lenticular cover, but um, I, you know, I'll settle with this. That's okay. Uh, New World, just one of my favourite gangster films I've seen in, in many many years um, the lift sequence involving him is just just unbelievable it's a brilliant film um, it's, yeah it, 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 it's it's a classic film it really is it's so stylish just great fantastic if you if, if you enjoy gangster film and you're a fan of Korean cinema in general definitely pick that up um, pick up Foul King uh about a guy, I think he gets victimised, and um, I wanted to pick this digi book up for a while. Um, I was torn between that and another edition of it. And he gets into wrestling with his luchador mask, and I think he, uh, I think it goes all crazy. Um, 
Yeah. I wanted to check that out. Now, A Hard Day. This is a brilliant, brilliant film. So crazy. Scenes very, 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 very funny. Very, very darkly funny. Uh, the scene in the morgue with his ma. Oh my god, that had me in just pieces laughing. Um, almost slapstick. Some of the stuff in it. Um, story's really good. The script's really strong. Definitely recommend this. A hard day. It's really, really good film. Very brutal in places, but it's uh, yeah, incredibly stylish. Really good film. Really enjoyed that hard day. Um, well, I'm about to. No, what, what, what should I run down? I won't run down that film yet. I'll show these two digi books, and I'm really going to run down a film. Romper Stomper, media book from Germany. Romper Stomper, if you've never seen it, definitely pick it up. Brilliant film. Um, Blade Runner digi book. Blade Runner's all that classic film. I absolutely love that film. I love Blade Runner. I don't think there's many people who wouldn't like Blade Runner. I mean, it's just brilliant. Uh, right, next up as well from um, our video. Um, I really love this film. Some people, <clears throat> I've seen quite a few people in, in reviews that they're, they're not a real fan of it being shot on VHS. Um, but I had I had a special edition of it in a, a VHS um, cover. I think it was an uh, Austrian or German release. It's a Necromantique um, by Hug Booker I've got a lot of his films. I think that's how you pronounce his name. If I've murdered it, I am sorry. Um, it's a beautiful edition. Um, I think is it limited to two thousand pieces? I think um, filled with just jammed with extras. Um, we've got the soundtrack as well. If you know this, if you know <laughs> know the main tune, you'll know it. It's, it's uh, very. I often find myself whistling the theme for some reason, and it sounds very. Um, it's it's a very, very catchy tune actually. The extras are just amazing. Um, I'm having a look at this myself because I picked it up and I haven't. Yeah, it's absolutely chock a block of extras. Um, the big fan of Nicomante too as well. Thirty uh, thousand, them to three thousand. Comes with a hundred page booklet. Great, I really love the film. Um, love the ending. The ending is just spectacular. Just has me in bits laughing. Um, it's uh yeah, it's the pride and it's it's look, look it's just no budget at all as in most book rights films, but um you know, there's something that I, I, I really like it. Again it gets i I've seen a lot of people kind of you know, they're not kind of fans of it, but you know, each do his own. I like the film and that's all that matters to me. Um now I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna save this one film to run down at the end. I was gonna like have it before this, so I'm gonna show something I do like, but I, I need to really run down a film at the end. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is um, another Arrow box set. Now this is <clears throat> big fan, massive fan of Vincent Price. This is the uh, um, six from Gothic set. Edgar Allan Poe. Big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. Love his work. Love his works. So, um, I got a massive um. A complete set of his. I've I like to read all of his, all of his stories. Um, this has Fall of House of Usher. Had that as a still book. Sold that and the Pit and the Pendulum. I knew this was coming out. Tales of Terror. Um, I haven't seen that in ages. Raven. I haven't seen that. The only one I haven't seen. This is too much like uh, like earlier. I, I haven't seen that. Haunted Palace. I absolutely love Haunted Palace. Comes with standard armor. You've got a nice thick booklet as well. Really small as well. Really compact. A nice little box set, man. It's not too overblown. It fits nice on the shelf. Really nice as well. You know, you know, worth the price. I'm not sure how much I paid for it. Actually, okay. Again, I mean, I'm, this is a backlog of, of stuff. I, I should have I should have done a video kind of earlier. Really, I mean, it's a bit of a mess video, and it won't be like this again. And like loads of titles, and you know, I haven't. I, I need to talk about titles more in, in my um, videos, and I think I've kind of this video is almost uh, just a mix mash of kind of a lot of stuff. So I do apologise. Now this following film picked it up um, I'm not a massive fan of the, I like some of the director's works uh, I like Clerks I like Red State but the man himself I'm not I'm I'm not a fan of Kevin Smith um, I think he he's believed his own hype in recent years when there's nothing really to go on um, didn't like his stuff about Tim Burton I thought he was totally disrespectful and you're talking about a director who's got more I mean, directorial ability and talent than, than 
Smith would ever hope to have and he has a constant fraternity of hipsters that blow smoke up his ass, and he's believed his own hype unfortunately and there's nothing more apparent with what I've said within this film Tusk um, you got uh, Justin Long he's a he's a podcaster uh, trying to find interesting stories and goes to Canada and somehow meets uh, Michael Parkinson, an eccentric old guy living by himself tells him a few stories gets interested uh, ends up drugging him and begins to dismantle his body and turn him into a walrus which he has a fixation Michael Parkinson's uh, um, a sea accident early in his life now the, at times with Michael Parkinson long there's some great dialogue there really is there's some very good dialogue really enjoy Michael Park's soliloquy about um, him being in the care system in Quebec but the film the film's central premise would work in like a Tales from the Crypt segment 20-25 minutes you cannot have an hour and 50 minutes of this not just absurdity but an array of irritating characters um, so around the 45 50 minute mark it still stands Michael Parks again brilliant actor and I like Justin Long then Johnny Depp it, it turns up in it as a, as a detective and I'm beginning to lose the will to live by this point and then the last I'd say 50 minutes is just utter moronic shit utter moronic I mean it, it's just I, I can't believe he directed this film and, think, and thought this would be a good idea I, it it, it 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 just numbed my mind how, how 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 utterly utterly awful it was, and you'll get all the usual indie wire, you know, of course saying it's brilliant, you know, the usual tack on crap, Kevin Smith's best work, which is just total bollocks, not true at all, blah blah this that and the other. It, 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 it's an absolute, it, it's a fucking mess of a film. I would be very surprised if if, if even the most avid Kevin Smith fan couldn't see that. Um, it's it's just it's ridiculous, but in a bad way. In a bad way. At times the dialogue is great, but it's Michael. You've got two great actors in Michael Park, Michael Parks and Justin Long. You know, and to waste them in like this in this awful film, awful film, really staggeringly bad. Really, um, was just just unbelievable. So yeah, um, I wouldn't recommend it in the least. Maybe in maybe for about half an hour involved with Michael Parkinson just along in the early parts of the film, but it's just uh, it's just utterly ridiculous. And again, Johnny Depp just turning up. Look, we realise your daughter's in it. You're obviously starting it just to kind of give her a little. Bit. She's only in it for five minutes herself. She plays some um, assistant, you know, whatever. But anyway, look, I, I'm, I'm I like Clerks. I like Red Star. I like uh, I can take some of these quirky films in the mid nineties, but. I honestly believe there's not a director on earth that is more overrated than him. So yeah, that is uh, the end of the update. Um, and I reckon I'll be selling Tusk, to be honest, because I, I just each time I look at it, it kind of irritates me. So yeah, that's the end of the update. Um, I'll be back for a shorter update in a few weeks. I'm trying to keep on top of it now. I'm less busy. So yeah, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the comments. And I will see you uh, with a new video in a few weeks. Cheers.